We're back on the Sports Zone. I am Mike Aglioloro. Today we're going to continue previewing the Major League Baseball season for 2014. Of course, over the weekend we finished the division by division look. But this week we're going to look at the New York teams. Over the weekend, Brian Zamorski will be previewing the Yankees 2014 season. And today I will be looking at the New York Mets 2014 season. And though it's a bit off topic, if you hadn't had a chance to do so, check out Fixing the Fight Game from Sports Zone's Tom Lembo as he takes a look at what is wrong with the world of boxing and what needs to be changed for it to reestablish itself as a major sport. Now on, this is SportsZone.com. So with that, we'll take a look at the 2014 season for the New York Mets. Of course, the 2013 season was the year of Matt Harvey. He, of course, dominated the National League over the first half of last season, culminating with a start at the All-Star Game played at City Field. Then, of course, was the tragic news in late August that Matt Harvey had torn his ulnar lateral ligament and would require Tommy John surgery, forcing him to miss the entire 2014 season. Right then, everything changed. While the Mets had seen the debut of Zach Wheeler, he, of course, had a pretty good second half when he came up and saw the emergence of guys like Noah Snydergaard and Rafael Montero out of the farm system. 2014 was billed as the return to relevance, and now with Harvey going down, that, of course, means that 2015 more than likely will be that year. But as for this season, Zach Wheeler will, of course, start the season in the Mets rotation with Dylan G as the opening day starter. He had a great second half, sparked by his shutout of the Yankees in late May when the Mets swept the Yankees. Uh, that kind of sparked his entire season. He finished the year at 12 and 11. At that, at that moment, he came into it with the Mets wondering if they were going to demote him. He wound up, for all intents and purposes, being the staff ace after Harvey went down. So he's going to wind up starting opening day. And, of course, the big acquisition in the, in the rotation was Bartolo Colon, hoping to, in some way, fill the void left by Matt Harvey. Him, of course, coming off of what was in many ways a career season for him in Oakland. He will be turning 41 at one point this season. We all know what type of shape he's in. Those are the negatives with him. The positives are he is a veteran with experience who could help mentor this young pitcher, pitching staff when guys like Noah Seinergaard and Rafael Montero come up later in the season. Uh, Daisuke Mazuzaka was for some reason re-signed, and he will be starting at least the season in the rotation. John Neese will miss the first week of the season with his various injuries. He, of course, has been sent for two MRIs on his shoulder within the last month. And in my honest opinion, he's going to wind up missing more than the first week of the season. They can say he's going to be back April 6th all he wants to, but I, I get the feeling that they're not going to want to rush him back. And if they get even the slightest sign that he's still hurt, it's going to be Henry Mejia coming up. He, of course, had a decent second half before he was shut down with bone spurs in his elbow. So this year, the pitching staff is going to miss Matt Harvey, but you're going to see a lot of the young guys coming up. Mejia, like I said, will wind up being the first arm up out of the minor leagues, and then you'll see Montero and Seinergaard probably in that order as the season progresses. The bullpen is still a mess, of course. Bobby Parnell will be starting the season healthy, but they're not going to rush him. Jose Valverde was brought in in the offseason on a minor league contract. He actually impressed some people with the velocity he showed. He will be starting the season as the setup man, and in the early going, he could be splitting the closing duties with Bobby Parnell. Vic Black was thought to be a 7th, 8th inning bridge. He's going to start the season in the minors after he showed some terrible control of his own. And other names in the bullpen include John Lannon, the left-hander who spent the majority of his career as a starter with the Washington Nationals. He will be the lefty slash long man out of the pen for the Mets with the youngster Jerus Familia starting the year as one of the right-handed arms out of the pen as well. If he's finally healthy, the thought is he could be one of the top arms, but we've been saying that for two or three years now. He has to stay healthy and effective because he was terrible in his time up last season. Switching to the offense, and Chris Granderson was, of course, added to bat cleanup to give David Wright some protection in the lineup. And Chris Young was added, of course, $7 million for one season to bulk up the outfield, which, of course, was one of the weak spots on, a, on this team last season. And Juan Lagares, who was a defensive revelation 
uh, when he was promoted during the summer, and Eric Young, who led the National League in stolen bases after he was acquired for Colin McHugh, up the rest of the outfield, and you will see all of them at various points throughout the season as the Youngs and Ligaras figure to split time between center and right field. As for first base, still a mess, folks. Ike Davis, Lucas Duda, and Josh Satin will all be making the roster and all wind up sharing time at first base, at least in the early going of the season, with Ike and Duda splitting the time against right-handed pitchers and Josh Satin uh, getting all the at-bats against the left-handed pitchers. Satin was pretty good when he was promoted last season. Ike, of course, had a miserable first half, was demoted, and was doing a decent job when he came back up until he wound up straining his oblique and missing the entire month of September. Mets spent basically the entire offseason trying to trade Ike or Duda and didn't get a package that they liked for either. And let's be honest, the Mets kind of floundered when it came to the trade market. They had grand expectations and couldn't really do much because they kept making the mistake of thinking that Ike and Duda were guys that should be traded individually rather than trying to package them with other assets in the rotation. Of course, Harvey not being there limited what they could trade from a pitching standpoint as well. We once again start the season with Ike, Duda, and Josh Satin at first base. Shortstop is still a mess with Ruben Tejada starting the season there. It looked for a while like the Mets were going to try to sign someone like Steven Drew, but they didn't want to give $14, $15 million to the guy and give up a draft pick. And seeing as how Steven Drew is not worth $14, $15 million, you can't really blame him. And they haven't been able to pull the trigger on a trade for a shortstop either, as guys like Nick Franklin and Didi Gregarious from the Arizona Diamondbacks and the Seattle Mariners are still available, but the Mets haven't been able to do anything to get either of those guys. So Tejada will start the season at shortstop. Uh, the only positive here is with Wilmer Flores getting an extended look at shortstop in AAA. If Tejada struggles, they could always bring up Flores, whose bat could play a lot better at shortstop than it could at the other positions. Daniel Murphy will still be at second base, and more than likely he will bat number two in the lineup once again. You know the deal with Murphy. Average defensively, decent bat, and he's a grinder. That's why Met fans love him. The major X factor with this offense going into the season will be the development of catcher Travis Darno. Of course, he was the big prospect acquired in the R.A. Dickey trade with Seinergaard, and he floundered offensively when he came up in the second half of last season. He was able to handle the pitching staff very well, but last year he suffered his third major injury in as many seasons and missed a long part of the season recovering from that. His rehab, as I said earlier this offseason, basically was his major league stint in late August and the remainder of September. So you have to hope that those at-bats and what he has seen in spring training will at least help him to make the adjustments he has to make. Early offensive signs have not been so promising in spring training, but it's still a long season. And as I said earlier, I do believe Darno is simply a slow starter. He's shown that at any level he has been at in the minor leagues, and I do think he's going to be just fine offensively. But his development this season is going to be a major key to how far the Mets can go. And of course, Sandy Alderson and Terry Collins have both said that this team has the talent to win 90 games. You know, it's great that they say that. The strength is with the pitching staff. If Cologne and even Daisuke can pitch somewhat up to, and in Daisuke's case, better than what they've shown in the past in their careers, and guys like Zach Wheeler, maybe Henry Mejia, Dylan G, John Neese are able to put together decent seasons, and guys like Seinergaard and Montero come up later in the year if any of those guys struggle. This team is going to be able to compete from a pitching standpoint. A lot has to go up right with that bullpen. And as far as the offense goes, you're starting at first base with the three-headed monster in the hope that someone can wind up producing at least to the level that you expected out of him at some point in the last couple of years. And yes, I'm referring to Ike Davis. You're hoping for a miracle at shortstop. And of course, you'd like to think you know what you're getting out of David Wright, Curtis Granderson, and Daniel Murphy. But those are really the only three solid offensive players that I feel you can count on for any degree of consistency. Everyone else you still have to see prove it to you. So whether or not that happens is going to be a big key to whether or not this team can get anywhere close to 90 wins. 
like I said, I th like I said earlier in the week, I do think they're going to improve off of last season. I'm saying 78 games right now. If they are able to finish the year at 500, I look at that as a positive, and we can only hope that 2015 will be the year that they return to relevance. Even though, even I acknowledge we've been saying that for a while now. Once again, check out Tom Lumbo's look at the world of boxing in fixing the fight game. Now on thisisportszone.com. Take a look at some of the art other articles that will be coming out this weekend, including Brian Zamorski's 2014 preview of the New York Yankees. Follow us on Facebook. Check us out on Twitter at We Are Sports Zone. Send us any questions and comments you may have. Thanks for watching, folks. Once again, for This Is Sports Zone, I am Mike Aglioloro. We'll see you next time, folks.